Hey, before I start this video, you can see me here frozen on the screen. Uh, this video is from my course, Create Awesome Vue.js Apps with Nux.js. So in this course, I go, go over about five hours of Vue.js content to become all the way from beginner content to more advanced content. And then I go into Nux.js and inside Nux.js, we create this video game store. I just explain everything from server side middleware to normal middleware, how to deploy your application. I tell you everything about it. If you guys are interested in the course, I have a link on it below. Just click on that link. The course is now done. I'm going to be updating some information in the course soon, but you guys can uh, pick it up. It's awesome. Check it out. And without further ado, this video is on deployment. How do you deploy a Nux.js app? And I go over a couple different ways. Enjoy. So far, we've been using our application on our local host, but at some point we need to deploy it somewhere. So there's two ways we can do that with our Nux.js app. We can either deploy it as a statically generated files, or we can deploy it in universal app mode. So I'm going to go over a couple ways we can do this and we'll discuss it. So first you can see here, here's the app that we've created. Now I'm going to go and open up my console here. And there's two commands that you can use. You can use npm run. Actually, if you take a look at the package.json file before we get too far, you can see here we have the scripts. And under the scripts, we have dev, build, start, and generate. So build is what we use when we want to actually build our application for production. If we need to create our application for uh, if for a statically generated site, we use generate and that would be for production as well. So in other words, what we do is uh, just depends on what type of server and what kind of deployment we want to use. So let me tell you the differences. If we want to have our application in universal app mode, in that case, we're running code on the server side and on the client side, and we're doing things like with our server middleware then we need to run in universal app mode. In that case, we need to run build. On the other hand, if we wanted to load this up on an S3 bucket or GitHub pages or Netlify, there is quite a few options where you can host statically generated files. And what that does is it, if we run the generate command, then it'll go ahead and generate a folder for us and we can copy that folder anywhere and it should work fine. So let, let's take a look at that first. So I can do npm run generate, and that's going to generate the files, and you'll see here in the console what it's doing. Okay, great. So it went ahead and generated the files for us. So if we go to the dist folder, we can see here that we have this 200 HTML checkout, fav icons, index HTML, nux, readme. So I could copy this whole folder and put it up on GitHub pages or anywhere else, and it'll work. However, since we, in this application, we created some server middleware and we were doing some server side stuff, this application would not work. So we, none of our server side stuff would work. So what we want to do is run it and generate it so it can work as a universal app. To do that, we need to run npm run build. And that will build it. Okay, it's built. And don't worry about this warning here. It's just saying that we have a, a larger size in our asset files, but don't worry about that right now. So uh, it's built. If you look in the folder, it actually didn't put it in the dist folder. This is still the statically generated site. But if we go into the nux folder, it's dollar dot nux, so it's actually a hidden folder, and go to dist, this is actual the whole layout of, this is the actual bundled build files for our application that we just created with the server side rendering. So this is this is the folder that we want. Now, so to let's go ahead and since we have these files, let's go ahead and put it up on a server and I'll show you how to get it up and running. So one thing you could do and I'll bring up the console uh, right here is I'm already logged into a site. Uh, actually, this is very similar to, to a digital ocean Ubuntu instance. So this is just like a, a server that I have. It's very similar to DigitalOcean. And what I did is I basically went ahead and created a folder called site. And in it, there's nothing in it right now. So what I need to do is I'm going to open up WinSCP. And that's this program right here. And if you're on Mac, you can get 
different SCP clients, or you could do it from the command line, or you can FTP your files over. That's another way to doing it. So on this server, uh, I've actually, let me refresh it here. I've actually already copied the Nux folder over, but I'm going to delete that. So I have nothing in this site folder right now. So what I'm going to do, this, this left-hand pane right here is all the files in my server. So the easiest way to do this is you can copy the whole folder over. So that means you actually get all the source code too. And some people like that and some people don't like that. Because then in that case, on your production server, you would have all your source code. But you could always like do a git um, pull and then build and do everything here. Another way you could do it is you need to pull over some folders. So what I do is I pull over to the .nuxt folder that has, after I run the build command, make sure you run that first. I copy that over. I copy over the API folder because that's the folder that uh, has the special API server file that we created. Then I pull over the static folder for any static files I have. Then I pull over the store, or excuse me, not the store, but the nux config file. And I pull over the server file, the server folder. And I also do the package.json folder. So those are the ones you must have. Now you can pull everything over, but you don't have to. So what I did is I took my local directory that had all my Nuxt files in it. I just pulled over these specific folders, the static server API and .nuxt. So now if I ls here, I could see the files. So now I want to do an npm install. And now to make sure before you do that on your on your server, and this is an Ubuntu server, make sure you have node installed. So if I go node dash dash version, I have 9.3.0 installed. Make sure it matches. You actually have to have a new version of node to run Nux, so make sure you have that newer version. I also needed Python installed, so make sure you have Python 2.7 installed too. So that way you can do npm install, and this will install all the packages you need. And let's take a moment. Okay, it's run. It's downloaded the, all the packages, so we can go ahead and run it now. If we do npm run start, that goes ahead and runs it. Now it's running on my server in local ho uh, local host 3000, but it's actually that's not going to help us. We want to actually run it on port 80, and we also want to maybe use something like engine X to help work everything out. So we have a couple things we can do here. So if we go, um, I'm not going to give you instructions, but there is a way to install engine X on your server. So I would Google that. I'll put a link below with some instructions on how to install Nginx. That's not a part of this tutorial. But Nginx is like a, a really pretty good web server that we can use. And once you have it installed, you just need to go to Etsy Nginx. And then you go to the sites available. And you go into the default file. And what I did is I already set this up beforehand to show you guys. So I deleted everything in the, in the server bracket here. And I just left here, this listen port 80, my server name Zulu, and then I had a proxy pass. So this is basically doing a reverse proxy. In other words, we're going to run the, uh, the Nux server on port 3000, and then we're going to reverse proxy that in Nginx so it actually listens on port 80. So port 80 will actually listen to the internal port 3000. And so that's all you really need to do is just this, this command, this line right here. I'll add that to the notes below too so you guys can see it in your sites available file, uh, sites available directory, the default file. So that's all you really need to do there. After you add that, you can go ahead and restart the server. So do sudo service nginx stop, and then you have to put in your password. And then I would do start. So to stop and restart the service after you change the sites available default file. And then after you do that, I'd go back to your folder. And you there's some ways you can do this. I have a, a dedicated username, Eric, that I've logged into this server. You can make a, another dedicated user called like www. And then all its responsibility would be to uh, run this application. And then you can lock down a bunch of things on it. There's a lot of ways to do this. Um, but so I have the directory here now I want to run it forever so one thing I 
found really useful is I installed a, let's see here if I have it. So I ran a command, npm install, and it's called pm2, and I did that tack g, so that installed it globally. And pm2 is a server that you can run for Node, and it basically, if your server reboots, it automatically starts the service again after the server restarts. That way, you don't have to worry about it accidentally stopping. It restarts it. There's a bunch of logging involved. It's production ready. It's pretty awesome. So what I do here is I do PM2 after I NPM install it. Do PM2, then I do start, then uh, start and NPM dash dash start. So that what this does is it runs the PM start command which will run it in the, it'll fork it and basically run it in the background and it'll run npm run start or npm start. So if I do this, you can see it, it went ahead and added it. You can see here at the top fork that it has it online. You can also run pm2 monit and that'll show that it's running. So it should be running now on my server. So to test that out, we just need to open it up and see if it works. So I'm gonna go ahead and open this up and I'm gonna put in the web address, 47. So cool, here is the store running on my server. And let's just make sure it works. I can do slash API. Well, if I click on any of this, I'm not getting any errors. Description looks okay. So if I put in API and then title, still working. So you can see here it's working from the server. I'm deployed. I have pretty good PM2, works, works great in production, and I'm all set. Now, like I said, you could copy the whole folder over, everything in the next folder, but this is just a little bit easier. You just need a, a handful of folders. And then if you needed to make any changes in the future, all you would need to do is run npm run build again, go into the .nuxt slash build folder, or dist folder, excuse me, and then copy that all over and copy it to the same place on the server.